broadcasting live from the Philippine Institute of Certified Public Accountant, Laguna Chapter. This is your Master of Ceremonies, Geronima A. Lapus, President of PICPA Laguna Chapter. Ladies and gentlemen, a blessed and pleasant afternoon to all. Welcome to our webinar in collaboration with the uh, San Pablo City Chapter. The title of our free webinar for today is Review of PESA Relevant Issue with our beloved resource speaker from the Bureau of Internal Revenue, Revenue District Office Number 57, who will be formally introduced to you later. On behalf of PICPA, the Guna Chapter, we extend our warmest greeting to all. Before we start, here are some rules that we should observe. <clears throat> Next slide, please. The presentation materials and evaluation forms can be accessed at the centralized portal by clicking the link. Uh, it is shown in the screen. And this same link will be posted in the chat, in the chat box later. Once you get there, uh, the uh, slide number four, you will, uh, sh uh, the, there are five buttons in this slide and you will be directed to button number one that will direct you to the copy of the presentation materials of the resource speaker, which is already available. The button number two, direct you to the link for posting question. Button number three, direct you to the link for viewing the posted question. And of course, in button number four, this will direct you to the Google evaluation form. This will be made accessible about 10 minutes toward the end of the program or after the end of the open forum. You need to complete the survey using the Google form within 30 minutes after the end of the webinar. And finally, to verify your evaluation, you have to click button number five, where you can confirm if your submission of the Google evaluation has been duly recorded by our system. A participant earned a certificate of attendance only upon compliance with the following uh, condition. Next slide, please. All right. So make sure that you are registered, which we did, the pre-registration. And of course, the attendance, which has been captured automatically by the Zoom upon logging in, in the webinar. Uh, participation in the answering several poll questions that has been launched at random times during the webinar. Let your cameras be open so that in the, uh, the duration of the webinar, you are being uh, seen and you are being uh, monitored by our, our secret monitoring from the PRC. And of course, you have to complete the evaluation form at the end of the webinar. You need to submit two feedback forms. The uh, Zoom evaluation, which will be displayed on screen, at the end of the webinar and the Google evaluation accessible through button number four at the centralized portal. After submission, submission of your evaluation, a confirmation email will be sent to make sure that your email per our record is correct. This will also serve as a proof of submission of your evaluation. Please take note that non-compliance with the mentioned condition would result to non-issuance of certificate of attendance. To conduct our webinar in an orderly manner, kindly observe the following webinar etiquette. First, please post only relevant messages and comments in the chat box. Links to the centralized portal and other important announcements will be posted by the organizer in order to avoid flooding the chat room with queries on the link. Kindly refrain from posting advertisement on the chat box. Please raise and like the question on the question and answer box and no public sharing of the resource material. Just to make sure that everyone will get used in participating in the poll questions, we will now be launching the first poll question. You have one minute to click on the option. Please be reminded that as uh, in order to earn the CPD, you have to participate in the poll as this is one of the conditions in earning the certificate of attendance.
Do we have the result now, Ma'am Marianne? Or we still wait? Okay. Oh, at this point in time, happy got 79% and 19% are inspired. Oh, why? There is 1% amused. Okay. All right. So uh, we'll go uh, next to the proper. We have our OTAM CPA, Ma'am Marianne. As, okay, let us raise our hands, please. The oath of the CPAs as a certified public accountant, I shall comply with the following principles of my profession. I shall be straight. Next, please. I shall not allow bias, conflict of interest, or undue influence of others to override my professional or business judgment. I shall maintain professional knowledge and skill at the level required to ensure that my client or employer receive competent professional services based on current development in practice, legislation, and techniques. I shall act diligently and in accordance and in accordance with applicable technical and professional standards. I shall respect the confidentiality of the information acquired as a result of my professional and business relationship. I shall not disclose any such information to third parties without proper and specific authority, unless there is a legal or professional right or duty to disclose. I shall not use information for my personal advantage or those of third parties. I shall actively believe, participate, and promote the programs and activities of my professional organization. I shall comply with relevant laws and regulations, and I shall avoid any action that will discredit the profession of accountancy in the Philippines. I impose this obligation upon myself voluntarily without mental reservation or purpose of evasion. So help me, God. All right? Uh, thank you for that. So, um, to, officially, to officially open our webinar, this webinar is a collaboration with the San Pablo City chapter. So, I would like to present to you to welcome, to welcome us, the president-elect of the, the City of San Pablo, no other than Miss Maria Cristina Pangan. Mom? To RDO Miguel Morada, ARDO Emily Simpson, Sir Carlito Mariano, to the BIR Group Supervisor, Ms. Grace Mangubat, other BIR officers and staff, to our PICA past presidents and colleagues, good afternoon. And thank you for joining this webinar. I appreciate much of your support on this event which is about the review of the relevant issues of the Philippine Economic Zone Authority. We are indeed very grateful to the officers of the BIR for another collaboration through this important dialogue. The PESA, or the Philippine Economic Zone Authority, is a government agency in the Philippines created to help promote investments in the export-oriented manufacturing industry into the country by assisting investors in registering and facilitating their business operations and providing tax incentives. So it is very timely and important for all of us to be informed about its current relevant issues. I hope that through this webinar, businesses, accountants, and even government employees, of course, will be better informed and equipped with helpful tools and guidance. We must do this together towards a lasting and sustainable workplace. Again, thank you very much and welcome to this webinar. Thank you, Ms. Panga, for that uh, very warm opening remark. Before we continue, I would like also to call in the virtual room uh, our beloved um, 
Regional uh, Revenue District Officer, no other than Sir Miguel Murada, to give his inspirational message to 380 participants, 381 to be exact, sir, participants for this webinar that we are in partnership with you. Sir, good afternoon. Hello, hello. Hi, hello. Hi, hello. internet to be to. Good afternoon, po. Sa atin lahat. Especially our uh, president, uh, Yerumina Lapos, members and officers. Ma Malinaw po ba? Yes, sir. Malinaw po, sir. Malinaw? Clear, sir. Very clear. Uh, so, so, good afternoon to all to the attendees of our to this, uh, free review on these uh, relevant issues which was uh, made possible in partnership with the uh, Pikpa Laguna chapter. This is a uh, timely kasi after the uh, pandemic at the ang ating economy ay medyo bumabalik na. And uh, in view of the numerous concerns and uh, queries in relation to the issuance of revenue uh, regulation number 21, thus 2021, amending pertinent provisions, particularly the bad zero rating and exemption and importation and domestic purchases respectively. So, ang laki po ng uh, assigned goal natin na binigay, although despite of the higher assigned goal, we, uh, we were able to hit the goal for the past uh, uh, months, also the cumulative. So, Ako po yung nag-appeal sa inyo na please do your share by paying your tax correctly so that uh, your uh, contribution is very important to our government. In order to uplift the lives of the Filipino, uh, without the government, it could not survive. So malaki po ang uh, ambag natin dyan. Kahit maliit po yan, pag pinagsama-sama po natin yan, ay malaki pong may tutulong dyan. So... Ang uh, assigned goal po namin, almost uh, 13 billion. So ngayon, nasa almost 200 million ng aming excess. Kaya malaking bagay po ito na dapat malaman din ng mga taxpayers ang mga bagong regulation para makorek yung inyong mga client. Kasi mahirap din po na sa bandang huli ay mayroong babayaran na hindi alam. Dahil uh, alam nyo naman ang batas. Uh, ang tinatawag natin na uh, yung hindi alam, hindi na excuse yung mga ano, marami pong ganyan. So nagpapasalamat din po ako kasi uh, doon sa mga nagpa-participate dito at uh, very active ang ating uh, partner, ang PICPA. Kasi sa ibang district, ang, sa, ang comment nila, ang PICPA lag ito dito napakasipag pagdating din sa mga ganitong bagay. At kaya dinidisseminate nyo ang inyong mga nakakalaman. So, hindi ko na po pahabain. Kaya, let us hear our uh, magaling na uh, lecturer, si uh, Grace Mangubat and si Arnold Perez. Good afternoon po sa inyo lahat. Thank you so much, sir, for that. Thank you very much for that special message of yours. Thank you very much also that you were able to meet our goal for the last year, uh, for the last previous month. And so we will continuously support you, the BIRRD of 57, as well as the other district offices within Laguna or within the nation, because we firmly believe that the economy coming back uh, like this, we need to do our best so that our government can do his 
services by collecting properly. We will assure you that we will do our best to help you in collecting your gold, sir. Thank you. All right. So this time, uh, I would like to call on the, uh, the speaker per se, Mr. Arnold Perez, to discuss the review of press of relevant issues. So let us sit down, relax, and be attentive so that you will know this new issuances for our so-called PESA company. Sir Arnold, we are ready now to listen to you. Sa so, mapagpalang araw po sa ating lahat. Uh, I'm Arnold Perez po from RDO 57, West Laguna. Uh, beside me po ang aking groupmate, si R.O. Johnny Don Alidio, R.O. Sophia Trabalio at ang aming group supervisor, si Ma'am Grace Mangguban. Uh, ngayon po, tatalakayin natin ang ilang PESA relevant issues or PESA relevant issuances. Uh, ilan lang po to kasi limited lang po yung time natin, 2 hours lang po. Kung buong PESA po to baka ang hundi po kulang sa atin. So, pumili lang po kami ng ilang topic na pagkatalakayan natin ngayon. So, Ito po yung mga topic natin. Number one, incentives to registered business enterprises or RBEs. Tax treatment on sale of scrap. So napasingit lang po ito kasi meron po mga issues na mga nagtatanong po regarding sa scrap. Definition of direct and exclusive use and rules on availment of tax. Uh, but incentive. Before po kasi walang direct and exclusive use. Basta pesa, nag-import or nag-purchase. Uh, exempt. Ngayon po kailangan ng direct and exclusive use only. Then po, by IR documentary requirements for zero-rated sales. So ito po ay regarding sa purchases ni PESA, local purchases ni PESA. Then, but treatment on sale to RBEs under create law, but transition rules on sale to existing enterprises registered prior to create law. And lastly po, treatment of uh, pass of but and erroneously paid but. So alam naman po natin na ang accounting and tax treatment ng PESA ay much different and much complicated compared to other domestic corporations kasi po ang dami-daming legal basis, ang dami-daming tax laws na nagogovern sa tax application ni RBE. Anyway po, ito po ay hindi lang siya applicable sa PESA. Applicable din po ito sa ibang IPA or investment promotion agencies. Kaya lang po, dito po sa Laguna, Ang marami po kasi PESA. So, we focus on PESA. So, ang main legal basis po is the Special Economic Zone Act of 1995 or RB 7916. Meron din po tayong court decisions kasi meron pong provision si PESA hindi po nasusunod pagdating sa court. Meron pong conflict. So, didiscussin po natin din yan mamaya. Uh, meron po akong examples. Then, tax code po. Dahil ang PESA po is Special Economic, uh, covered po siya ng PESA law, Minimal na minimal lang po yung nasa tax code. Kasi pagdating po sa tax rates and tax uh, tax, uh, tax uh, issuances, iba po yung sa PESA. So minimal lang po yung. Ito na po yung complicated. Create law. Nagkaroon po tayo ng create law. Ni, uh, inlarify po siya at inimplement ni revenue regulations, revenue memorandum orders, and revenue memorandum circulars. So ito po yung mga legal tax application. Of RBE. Simulan po natin sa incentives. Ano po ba yung mga incentives ni PESA? Ang una po ay income salary. So meron pong 100% exemption from corporate income tax for registered activity. So for export enterprise po, uh, meron po tayong 4 years to 7 years depending on location and industry priorities and followed by SCIT or Enhanced Deductions for 10 years. So yung SCIT po, uh, Special Corporate Income Tax. So bali po, ang total niyang incentives ay 17 years sa export enterprise. For domestic market enterprise naman po, mayroon po tayong ATH na 4 years to 7 years, followed by Enhanced Deduction for 5 years. So ang total po niya is 12 years. 
So, magkaiba po yung export saka. Although pareho po siyang PESA registered. Next po, after ng ITH, yung registered business activity can avail special corporate income tax or enhanced deduction for 10 years. It shall, uh, the SCIT shall be equivalent to 5% based on gross income earned in lieu of all national and local taxes and shall be allocated to 3% national government and 2% to local government. Ano po ba yung gross income? Uh, gross income po, it refers to gross sales or gross revenue. Napaka-basic na po nito para sa ating mga accountant. Gross sales less gross revenue uh, or gross revenue derived from registered activity. Mind po, registered activity. Net of sales discount, sales returns and allowances, and minus cost of sales or cost. But before any deduction is made, administrative expenses or incidental losses during a taxable period. Next po, uh, meron po tayo mga direct cost na allowable in computing gross income. Kasi nga po, ang basis ni PESA after ng ITH ay 5%. So dapat po, tama po yung mare-report natin na gross income. So ito po yung mga allowable direct cost. Una, direct salaries, wages, or labor expenses. Ito po, it pertains to production of operation. Then production supervision salaries. Raw materials used in manufacture of products. Goods in process. So, ito po yung movement ni beginning at saka ni ending. So, kung mas malaki yung beginning kaysa ending, may expense po tayo. Same as finished goods. Kung mas malaki si beginning kaysa ending, may, may expense din po tayo. Then, supplies and fuels used in production. Next po, depreciation. Ito po yung bago. Uh, depreciation of machinery, equipment, and building directly and exclusively used in the rendition, production, of registered activity. And of that portion of the building owned or constructed that is directly and exclusively related in the rendition, production of the registered activity. Before po kasi yung depreciation na uh, sinacharge na po siya in full. Ngayon po, meron po tayong allocation for direct and exclusive use. Kasi kung yung machinery naman hindi natin ginagamit sa production, pati yung building, let's say administrative, hindi po siya alawa po. Same as rent po. So inaallocate din po natin yung rent. Direct and exclusive lang yung allowable deduction in computing gross income. And then next po is financing charges associated with fixed asset use directly and exclusively in the registered activity and the amount of which were not previously capitalized. So ito po ay regarding sa mga fixed asset na uh, pinastract po natin through financing. So yung interest po nun and other pang charges kung siya ay direct and related yung property, pwede po siyang deductible. Then, service supervision salaries and direct materials and supplies use. So, ito po yung mga allowable direct cost in computing gross income under 5% SEIT. Next item po is enhanced deductions. Before po, wala po nito. Pero nung uh, ano po yung create, nagkaroon na po tayo ng enhanced deduction. Ito pong enhanced deduction na ito, unlike other expenses, Hindi po natin kailangan ng substantiation dito kasi yung expenses po nito related po dito ay na-deduct na po natin, na-claim na po natin as part of cost or part of operating expenses. So additional lang po ito. So yung number one po, depreciation allowance of the asset acquired or the entity's production of goods and services for qualified capital expenditure. So additional 10%. So kung may depreciation po tayong pinilain, dun sa taas, cost and, cost and operating. So, additional 10% for building and 20% for machineries. Next item po, 50% additional deduction on labor expense incurred in the taxable year. And then, 100% additional deduction on research and development expense incurred during the taxable year. Additional 100 po to. 100% additional deduction on training expenses incurred in the taxable year. 50% additional deduction on domestic import incurred in the taxable year. And then next po, 50% additional deduction on power expense incurred in the taxable year. So ito po yung ilang mga enhanced deduction. Next po is deduction for investment allowance to manufacturing industries. When a manufacturing RBE reinvests its undistributed profit or surplus in any of the project or activities listed in the SIPP, the amount reinvested to a maximum of 50% shall be allowed as deduction from its taxable income within five years. 
from time of such the investment. And then last po, yung enhanced NOR po. Hindi na po tayo bago dito kasi yung sa domestic corporation may NOR po din. At dito lang po ay ito ay additional enhanced deduction. The net operating loss of the registered project or activity during the first three years from the start of commercial operation, which had been previously offset as deduction from gross income may be carried over as deduction from gross income within the next five consecutive taxable years, immediately following the year of such loss. So ito po yung mga enhanced deduction. So ano naman po yung mga conditions of availment? Ano po natin ma-avail to? Yung registered business enterprise may be granted enhanced deduction in addition to the allowable, as mentioned earlier po, in addition sa ordinary and necessary deduction. So ordinary and necessary plus enhanced deduction. Export enterprise at their op uh, may at their option avail of the enhanced deduction or SCIT provided that in no case shall the enhanced deduction be granted simultaneously with a special corporate income tax. So, nasa option po ni export enterprise kung pipiliin niya ay enhanced deduction using the uh, regular rate or SCIT na 5%. Pero hindi po natin pwedeng pagsabayan kung mayroon po silang iba't ibang registered activity. So, kung SCIT, SCIT sa lahat. Kung enhanced deduction, enhanced deduction sa lahat. So, yun po yung condition ng Abatement. May note po tayo sa baba, the SIP shall provide the requirements and conditions for a registered project or activity to be granted the ED from the start of commercial operation under Rule 3 of create implementing rules and regulations, provided that the Secretary of Finance, upon the recommendation of the CIR, shall issue revenue rules and regulations on the process to avail the enhanced of enhanced deductions. So dahil hindi pa po na-apply natin itong enhanced deduction, in the future po maaari itong may lumabas pang bagong reissuances regarding po dito. Ang next incentive po, number 2, tax and custom duty pre-importation of capital equipment, raw materials, spare parts or accessories directly and exclusively used in the registered activity or project. Before po, yung importation ay in, in full amount, exempt po tayo sa, uh, sa taxes. Ngayon po, kailangan directly and exclusively under create. Same as uh, but zero rating on local purchases of goods and services directly and exclusively used in the registered activity or project. Ito pong but zero rating on local purchases. Uh, hindi po nakiklaim lahat ito ng pesa, hindi po forket uh, pesa registered ka, makiklaim mo na. Later po, didiscuss po natin kung sino ba ang pwede lang mag-avail ng uh, input tax on local purchases. <laughs> then last po, exemption from payment of any and all local government issues in post fees licenses or taxes. Ito naman po para sa mga local government, exempt naman po tayo sa mga licenses and permits. Ito na po yung sa uh, local purchases and importation. Medyo mano po to, parang confusion, confusing. The VAT exemption on importation and VAT zero rating on local purchases shall only apply to goods and services directly and exclusively used in the registered project or activity of registered export enterprise. So registered export enterprise only for a maximum period of 17 years from the date of registration unless otherwise extended under the seat. So kapag pesa ka at hindi ka registered, enterprise, registered export, all local purchases and importation are subject to input ban. So yun po yung sinasabi sa Section 5 ng Create IRR. The excess input taxes attributable to surrelated sales by VAT registered RBEs may at the RBEs option be refunded or applied for a tax credit subject to the guidelines provided under RR 13-2018 as amended. So ito na po yung issue ngayon. So lahat ng PESA except export Enterprise, pag nag-purchase, whether import or local purchases, subject na po sa 12% tax. Kahit po yung pesa na domestic for domestic uh, enterprise, even if it is used for direct and exclusively for production, subject pa rin po sa input, sa input but na 12%. Sino po ba yung export enterprises? So ito lang po yung exam sa input but on importation and local purchases, yung manufacturing, assembling or processing activity, and services such as information technology, 
activities and business process outsourcing or BPO and resorting in the direct exportation and or sale of its manufactured assembled or processed product or ITBPO service to another export enterprise that will form part of the final export product or export service of the latter of at least 70% of its total production. So yung registered export enterprise po, uh, kapag more than 70%, makukonsider na po natin na export enterprise. So ito lang, sa, ito lang po yung exempt sa input VAT. Whether importation or local purchases, only registered export enterprise. Wala na pong ibang PESA registered activity na may exempt sa input VAT. Whether importation or local purchases. So ano naman po yung direct and exclusive use? Under create IRR po, yung section 5, rule 2, as amended, the direct and exclusive use for the registered project or activity refers to raw materials, inventories, supplies, equipment, goods, packaging materials, services, including provision of basic infrastructure, utilities and maintenance, repair and overhaul of equipment, and other expenditures. Ito po. Other expenditures directly attributable to the registered project or activity without which the registered project or activity cannot be carried out. Provided that the, that the VAT zero rating on local purchases shall be granted under endorsement of the concerned IPA in addition to the documentary requirements of the BIR. So kapag po yung mga um, purchases po natin wala po dito sa napanggit na mga items na to, hindi po siya Related. So, hindi po siya directly attributable, meaning po subject to input VAT. So, ito nga po yung pinag natin. Expenses should be directly and exclusive use in registered activity without which activity cannot be carried out. So, tanungin po natin ang sarili natin. Ito ba ay kailangan ng production para magtuloy yung operation? Kung hindi naman, so hindi siya direct and exclusive. Usually po kasi sa mga PESA, yung, di ba may mga shuttle tayo. Ayun ba ay for direct and exclusive ng sa production. Hindi naman. So, ngayon po, yung shuttle para sa BIR po, yung sale ni shuttle services to PESA, matabal na po yun. Kasi hindi naman po siya for direct and exclusive use. Yun po yung malaking issue ngayon kasi ang dami ng mga shuttle services na nag-render ng services sa PESA company. Next requirement po, dapat po ay may IP endorsement. So, sino po ba yung IP? Si PESA. So, kailangan po may certificate na zero rated. Then, isasubmit po yung BIR documentary requirements. So, kanino po isasubmit? Okay, po, ito po yung mga requirements pala muna. Sorry po. Uh, for registered export enterprise, prior to transaction, so ito po yung isasubmit nila sa local suppliers. So, yung certificate of registration nila from BIR, Certificate of Registration, ito, IPA from PESA, then BAT Zero Rating Certificate. Then for Registered Export Activity, Manufacturing, ITBPO, etc. Tax Incentive, Entitlement under the Great Terms and Conditions with the Availability Period, Applicable Goods and Services. And then last po, sworn declaration stating that the goods and or services being purchased will be used directly and exclusively in the registered project or activity. So ito pong core items na to, ito po yung isasubmit ni export enterprise kay local suppliers. Then si local suppliers naman po, mag a siya ng BIR registration niya. Yun po yung isasubmit na sa ICED. Ito po, uh, at zero rating application procedure. Ito po ay luma na, pero applicable pa din po. All applications for batch zero rate except large taxpayers. So large taxpayers na po ang nahiwalay dito. Isasamit po natin sa Audit Information Tax Exemption and Incentive Division. Then all applications for batch zero rate shall be accomplished and filed by the BAT registered seller. So ang magpapile po nito ay si supplier ng goods ni PESA. So hindi po si PESA. The application for batch zero rate should be processed and approved by for or disapproved within 15 days by ICED. And then the approval of application shall be given prospective effect. All approved application for batch zero rate shall take effect on the date the application was received and will not retroactive effect. So kung ngayon lang po kayo nag-apply, yung exemption lang po mula ngayon lang, yung mga previous months po, previous years, hindi po siya covered ng zero rating. 
para po dun sa mga bat registered local bat registered seller. The approved application shall be valid until December 31. So renewable siya every year. Ito po nasa right side po. Ito po yung uh, list ng mga requirement. Ito po yung sasamit natin sa, sa IGEN. Balik na lang po tayo dito sa may note po kasi dito na absence of prior BIR approval from the BIR, audit may result in the disallowance of the bad zero rated share of the supplier. So ang burden po nito yung nakay supplier, wala po kay pesa. So kaya po si supplier maghihigpit na po kay PESA kasi kapag sila po ay na-issue ng audit or ng letter of authority, sila po yung madidisallow yung bat zero, uh, bat zero rated sales. Meron po tayong transition rules, documentary requirements for transition on or prior March 9, 2022. Kasi po meron pong hindi na process prior to this date. So ano pong gagawin? For sales transactions that are qualified for BAT zero rating but failed to secure an approved application for BAT zero rating with the BIR, prior application may, may not be required until March 9. Subject, however, the following documentary requirements. So kailangan, kung hindi man natin na-submit to sa ITED, available po itong mga documents na to. Subsequently po, kailangan naman natin mag-apply mag ng certification sa ITED. Uh, ito naman po, napasingit lang po to kasi may mga nagtatanong po kung ano ba yung treatment ng sale of scrap. According po to sa first one to Kaysa Memorandum Sale Product 2005-32, the sale of production rejects and seconds from the registered activity of the export enterprise shall be considered covered by the registered activity of the said enterprise. Thus, any income derived from shall be covered by the applicable income tax incentive. Income tax holiday or 5% gross income tax. So, based po dito sa PESA memorandum na to, yung pong sale ng production reject ay nakabase daw po sa kung anong tax regime mayroon si PESA registered activity. Kung siya ay naka-income tax holiday, yung sale ng scrap, exempt. Kasi, naka ano pa siya eh, IPH. Then kung 5%, five, subject to 5% yung sale ng production project. So, depende po ito kasi kung yung binibenta naman po natin ay hindi siya part ng registered activity. Subject sa ano siya? Subject sa regular income tax rate. Kaya po nagkaroon ng CTA decision, the CTA held that the sale of scrap by PESA registered enterprise, the local customers is instead subject to regular corporate income tax so ito po yung kaso ni Hoya Glasdis na natalo po si Hoya, nanalo si CPA, si, si, si BIR, sorry, nanalo po siya. So yung sale ni Hoya sa ng scrap subject to corporate income tax. So in addition po, yung sa PESA, meron po kasing case na export yung scrap kasi share ko lang po yung experience ko dati, nasa PESA din po kasi ako. Lahat po ng scrap natin ay export. May nagtatanong bakit export. Kasi yung sale, ang product po namin is gold. So whether reject or finished goods, the, the, the price is same. So binabalik po namin sa supplier. So in that case po, naka 5% kami noon. So 5% din po yung uh, tax treatment ng sale of scrap. So bigyan nyo si BIR na prove na talagang yung binenta yung scrap ay part ng registered activity. Otherwise, talagang sasabdik namin kayo ng regular income tax rate. Initially, lagi po kaming sa regular income tax rate. Kasi wala naman po tayo talaga. Kasi yung scrap po, halo-halo na yun eh. Hindi naman po natin pwede sabihin na yun lang yun na talagang registered activity. So, bigyan nyo kami ng proof para maging income tax holiday or 5% plus income tax. Moving forward po, uh, ito po yung complications natin sa value-added tax. So yung impact ni create law on, on applicability of cross-border doctrine. So papasok na po dito yung ating mga revenue memorandum circulars na halos magkakasunod lang. So ano ba yung impact ni create? So yung impact of create law on applicability of cross-border doctrine under RA 11.534 or Corporate uh, Recovery and Tax Incentive for Enterprise Act 
while economic zones and three-port zones are still considered separate custom territories, the cross-border doctrine has been rendered ineffectual and inoperative for both purposes. Economic zone and three-port enterprises no longer considered location. It is limited to those which are directly and exclusively used in the registered project or activities. So may condition na po ngayon, as uh, I discussed before, for project or activity. Next po, ito na po yung bad treatment on purchases by RBE under create law, RMP for 2022. So kasi po si PESA, pwedeng registered domestic market enterprise or registered export enterprise. Paano po kung siya ay purchase a local supplier or subject to 12% VAT. Not direct and exclusive, subject pa rin. Kasi nga, yung direct subject, na, so yung not direct subject pa rin po. Kung registered export enterprise for direct and exclusive purchases from local supplier, 0% VAT. For not direct and exclusive, subject to 12% VAT. For a maximum of 17 years refund from the date of registration. For certificate of... Uh, registration unless extended under SIP. So 17 years lang po. After 17 years, kapag ikaw ay registered export, 12% lang na po. Hindi lang po domestic market yung uh, naiimposa natin ng but ito po sa baba. It also applies to IPA license service enterprise such as custom brokerage, tracking services, forwarding services, janitorial services, security services, insurance, banking, and other financial services. Consumers, cooperatives, credit unions, consultancy services, retail enterprises, restaurants, and other similar services as determined by the Fiscal Incentive Review Board. So in short po, talagang si registered export enterprise lang ang exempt sa 12% VAT kung direct and exclusive. Lahat po ng PESA registered and other registered enterprises registered other than PESA subject na po sa 12% VAT. So, bad treatment of sales to RBE, sale to, local, sale to by local and non-resident supplier to register. So, nagawa po ko ng illustration dito para mas ma, maintindihan po natin. Ito po ay regarding sa question 11 and 25 na RMC 24-2022. So, yung sale of non-resident supplier to registered export enterprise. So, but example, ito po si company D. Nagbenta po siya kay Company A, which is a registered and export enterprise. So, but exempt po siya? Nasa foreign territory po siya. Yung sale naman po ni local resident to supplier, supplier to registered export enterprise. Ito po si Company C, which is local, punta kay registered export, 0% po. Provided that the services or goods are directly attributable to or exclusively used in the registered project or activity. Next po. Ito naman po yung question 17. Hindi ko na po nilahat yung mga question kasi yung iba naman po ay uh, parang madali nang intindihin. Self-explanatory na po yung iba. So sale of non-export locator or domestic market enterprise to registered export or domestic enterprise. Ito po ay prior to create under 5% GIT but exempt treat its sales as but exempt to the extent of its registered activity. Under ITH po, sales to registered export enterprises are subject to 0% goods or services directly attributable and exclusively used in the registered project or activity. And sales to non-export locators or DMEs shall be subject to 12% VAT. So ito po from company A to Takay, company B, ito po yon. Then po, yung second scenario natin, uh, registration up during effectivity of create. So sales to registered export enterprises are subject to but at zero rate. Zero rate pa rin po to. If goods and services are directly and exclusively used in the registered project or activity. The next po, yung si company A kung takay company C, uh, sales to DMEs within eco zone and three port zones are subject to but. So subject na po to sa but. 12% but na po. Ito po yung second scenario natin, sale of non-resident non-export locator or domestic market enterprise to a custom territory client. So ito po ay from 
company A to company B. An export or domestic enterprise seller is registered prior to create law under 5% GIP, create its sales as but exempt to the extent of its registered activity. Under ITH, sale to enterprises from customs territory are subject to 12% VAT. So VAT abo na din po. Non-export or domestic market enterprises, seller is registered during effectivity of create law. Sales to enterprises from customs territory are subject to 12% VAT. So VAT abo na po. Ito naman po sa question 18. Sale of uh, domestic market and registered enterprises to registered export. So company A punta kay company B. So if registered export enterprise is but registered under ITH, 0% but if purchase of goods and services directly attributable to and exclusively used in the registered project of, or activity. Second scenario po, if the seller is under GIT, the sale that will form part of the final export product or export service of at least 70% of its total production or output shall be but exempt. And then for scenario B, sale of a registered export enterprise to another registered export enterprise. So pareho po silang export. So paano po ang treatment natin dito? If registered export enterprise is but registered under ITH, 0% but. If the purchase of goods and services directly attributable to and exclusively used in the registered project or activity. And then po, if the seller is under 5% GIP, the sale that will form part of the final export product or export service of at least 70% of its total production or output shall be patricent. Ito naman po ay sale to non-resident buyers for delivery to registered export services. So ang scenario po natin, sale of goods and services by non-registered business enterprise, company B, to a non-resident buyer for delivery to export-oriented enterprise. So binenta po dito, pero ang delivery po ay within the Philippines. So subject to 12% VAT, no longer considered subject to zero VAT, force one to train long. So VATable na po to. Then sale of raw materials or packaging materials by PESA registered business enterprise to a non-resident buyer for delivery to a resident local export oriented enterprise. So if PESA BBE is under 5%, GIT or SCIT, the sale shall be exempt from that. Medyo nakakalito nga po to kasi ang dami nating possible na transaction, PESA to PESA, PESA to foreign, and PESA to local. And then ito naman po, sales to non-resident for delivery to registered export. Ang sale of processing, manufacturing, or the packing of goods by a PESA registered business enterprise for persons doing business outside the Philippines, which goods are subsequently exported and transaction paid in foreign currency in accordance with PSP rule. Sale of processing, manufacturing, or the packing services by PESA RBE Entitled to 5% or SCA to persons doing business outside the Philippines shall be exempt from VAT. So yun po, exempt po siya sa VAT. Ito po, nagkaroon po tayo ng transitory provision for non-income related tax incentive. Ito po ay according to RMC 38-2022. Ano po ba sinasabi dito? Ito po, all existing registered export enterprise prior to create that will continue to avail their existing income tax incentives may continue to enjoy the VAT zero rating on local purchases that are directly attributable and exclusively used registered project or activity until the expiration of the transitory period as follows. So kung yung pong si registered export enterprise granted only income tax holiday, pwede niya ma-avail until the remaining period of ITH. Kung siya po ay nag-grant ng ITH and 5% on gross income earned, until expiration of 10 years. 10 years po ito, uh, bali po yung 4 plus 7 plus 10, so 17. Ito pong 10 ito ay after na ng ITH. And then the extent for the availment of patch zero rating on local purchases is anchored on the transitory period stated above. Thus, if the income tax incentive of REE has already expired prior to 
create, then the VAT zero rating on local purchases would no longer be availed. So yung pong na-discuss natin kanina na si registered export enterprise lang yung pwedeng mag-avail ng input tax. Unfortunately po, kung siya ay na yung income tax incentive prior to create, hindi na rin po siya makakapag-avail ng uh, zero rating. So subject na rin po sa 12% ang kanyang local purchases. So mahalaga po dito yung certificate of registration sa PESA kasi doon po magre-recon kung hanggang kailan po ang kanyang incentives. So registration requirement for registered export enterprises. Ito po ay RMC under RMC 24-2022 as amended by RMC 49-2022. So under ITH, registered as bad taxpayer. So si registered export po or si PESA kapag ka naka-ITH, but registered. Ano pong rate? Zero. Under 5% gross income tax or special corporate, register as non-bat taxpayer. So, kapag ka nag-change na po si, si PESA registered business enterprise from ITH, punta na siya ng SCAT, hindi na po siya bat registered. Mag, ano na po siya ng non-bat taxpayer na po siya. Registered export enterprise whose sales are generated only from registered activity and have shifted from ITH to SCAT. 5% GIT or SCIT shall within two months from the expiry of their ITH to change the registration status from BAT to non-BAT. So titingnan po natin kung kailan na-expire yung ITH niya. Doon po tayo mag-change uh, mag, uh, ng status from BAT to non-BAT. Existing BAT registered enterprises still registered as BAT taxpayer at the time the create law took effect are required within two months from the effectivity of their MSG to change its Registration to non-BAT. So dito po kung expired na yung BAT before po ng create law ay expired yung uh, income tax holiday niya, pwede pa naman po siya within two months. Ah, sorry, sorry. Uh, deadline is May 9. So two months from effectivity of RMC to change is registration to non-BAT. So mag-change pa rin po si registered business enterprise. Exception po. So may mga exception po tayo. Hindi porket tapos na yung ITH natin, mag-ship na po tayo sa nambat. So first exception po, if registered export enterprise has various registered enterprise under either ITH or SCIT. So kung may mayroon pa po tayong ibang product na subject naman siya sa ITH, tatapusin pa rin po natin yung ITH. Hindi po natin i-register as nambat na kaagad. If the registered export enterprise has other activities, so kung may other activities po siya, especially kung hindi naman po registered yung activities ni PESA, mayroon pa po silang binabayad ng BAT, let's say for the scrap or other activity na hindi na register sa PESA, hindi pa rin po tayo mag-register na as non-BAT. So tatapusin pa rin po natin hanggang sa mawala na talaga yung BAT registration natin. Ito naman po, treatment of pass on bat and erroneously paid bat. So ito po ay based on RMC 24-2022, question 39 and 40. So ano po ba yung treatment ng 12% pass on purchase of goods? Not directly. So si bat registered RBE po, ikiklaim niya ang bat as input tax credit against future output bat. So, and then next po, if no batable sales, continue to accumulate and refund available only upon expiration of bat registration. So ito po, dapat ay bago kayo mag-change from, from BAT to non-BAT, make sure na nag-apply na po kayo ng refund. Kasi once na non-BAT na kayo, yung excess input po natin, previously, hindi na po natin marirefund. Refund is not available since input tax is not directly attributable to zero rated sales. So yung uh, input BAT po natin from local purchases, hindi siya directly attributable, hindi po siya refundable. So, paano naman po kung non-BAT registered RBE? So, cha-charge po natin sa cost or expense account. Yung 12% BAT na chinarge natin sa atin ni supplier. Second scenario po, what if 12% BAT pass on inadvertently or on purchase of goods and services directly and exclusively used in registered activity? So, dito po sa scenario na to, direct and exclusive yung purchases mo ng goods or services. Ang ginawa ni supplier, chinarge ka ng BAT. So, anong gagawin mo? Ni PESA, 
contest with the supplier and seek reimbursement of paid VAT. So, contest mo kay supplier, bawin mo yung uh, binayad mo na VAT. The previously issued SI or OR must be returned to local supplier for cancellation and depression. So, magpagawa na lang po kayo ng bagong OR and or SI. For non VAT registered, ganun din po, contest the supplier and seek reimbursement of paid VAT. Previously issued SIOR must return to local supplier for cancellation and replacement. So, ito po, uh, basic lang po ito. Ito po ay reminders lang po sa atin sa pag-claim ng input VAT. Ano po ba yung mga requirements? Basic requirement, ensure all input VAT are properly substantiated. So, substantiated po yung mga pinilim natin, but official for but official receipt for services and invoices for purchase of goods. All required information should be indicated in the official receipts or invoice. That is the name of taxpayer, address, taxpayer's identification number, business style, amount of VAT should be shown separately in the official receipt or invoice. And then ensure that the VAT is properly accounted in the VAT return. VAT is recognized in the proper period. Bakit po proper period? Kasi kung ang VAT po ay last year pa, hindi na naman po natin pwede i-claim ngayon. So, dapat po proper yung period ng pag-claim natin ng input path. Thank you po. Uh, pasensya na po kayo kung mayroong mga topic na ina-expect nyo na makasama sa discussion. Kasi sa sobrang dami po ng coverage ng pesa, hindi na po namin na-expect So, kung hindi po kayo naliwana, kung mayroon po kayong gusto malas na discuss pwede naman po natin concern. Sasagutin na lang Alam naman po natin na komplikado ito pero we will try to make it simpler para po mas madali yung trabaho natin sa pesa. Yun lang po, maraming salamat po sa inyong pakikinig at sa inyong support po sa BIR at the OPP Center. Thank you po. Uh, before po tayo pumunta sa Q&A, meron kami hinandang 10 questions. So may quiz po tayo. Ah, uh, bisar magkano po ang ating ano? Magkano po ang ating price for each correct answer? Ah, um, meron po na tayong 10 questions. At uh, mananalo po natin sa 250 each ng katama po sa ating contestant via chat box po. Ano po? So ganun po ulit ang mechanics natin. Um, magta-type po kami ng question number one, go, bago po kayo mag-answer. Kung sino po ang unang tatama sa answer namin, ay siya po ang ide-declare namin na wala. Ano po? Okay, Yung kung open forum natin, nakikita po namin maraming tanong sa chat box, sasagutin po namin yung lahat mamaya hanggang sa mga kakaya po namin. Pero ngayon po, tayo po ay mag-cooking di muna. <laughs> Our tax quiz, tax quiz master for the day, our uh, Good afternoon, everyone. So, we start na po tayo ng ating uh, tax quiz. Uh, sir? Yes po. Uh, sorry, nag echo po. Ah, okay, sorry. Sorry, uh, okay, sorry. So, mag-share screen lang po ako para sa ating tax with me. So, nakikita pa ito yung answer. Ayan <laughs> 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 oh, na nga. Unahala lang. Ha? Hindi. Ako ang nakikita. Ito mag-share. Panalo. Sino? Ano ba? Ano ba? Ano ba? Hindi ba? Hindi ba? Share mo. Okay. Sino <laughs> So, wait lang po, nagkakaroon lang po tayo ng uh, technical uh, problem dahil live na live po tayo. Yeah, may mga nagsasagot na oh. 
Sumagot na pero wala pang tanong. Kaya po yung mga tanong nyo, ilagay nyo po sa, ano, sa portal. Kaya So, hello, hello everyone. So, for question, um, which of the following cost is fully uh, deductible in computing gross income under 5% SCIC? A, direct labor, B, depreciation of building, C, royalty payment based on sale, or letter D, rental of building. Go. Bago ka nagsabi ng go, marami ng answer, sir. Oh, well, sorry po. <laughs> medyo, medyo may konting delay po. So, the correct answer is letter Letter A, direct labor. So, ang winner da po is si Miss April Lynn Solano. Yan, congratulations. Okay, for the next question. Okay. Question number two. Uh, which of the following statements is or are false? A. Sale of processing, manufacturing, or repacking services by PESA RBE entitled to 5% SCIP to persons doing business outside the Philippines shall be subject to 12% VAT. B. Under RMO 7 2006, all applications for VAT uh, zero rated say, shall be accomplished and filed by the bad registered sellers, not the purchaser of goods and or services. C, the application for bad zero rated, uh, uh, zero, zero rate should be processed and approved or disapproved within 15 days unless there are legal issues. Or letter D, all of the above. Go. Kasi, siyempre, mahal yung yung anesthesiology pa. Bukod yung ano nun eh, yung TF nun eh. Kasi di ba nung na-opera ako, ay na... So the correct answer for question number two is letter A. <laughs> si Miss Marites. Marites Malik Dem. Si Ms. Marites Malik Dem. So, congratulations po, ma'am. Question number three. Which of the following statements is R2? Letter A. All applications for VAT zero rate shall be processed and approved by Audit Information Tax Exemption Incentive Division. Or letter B. Sale of scrap is always subject to VAT. Uh, so 12% VAT or C, sale by local residents of the domestic market registered enterprise is subject to 12% VAT or letter D, all of the above. Go. Oh. So the correct answer is letter, letter C. So, ang winner po ay si Ma'am Ermaline Macarubo. Uh, 
Um, Ermaline Macarobo, congratulations po. Okay. For question number four, enhanced deductions that may be claimed by REE against gross income in addition to allowable ordinary expenses include the following except letter A, 50% additional deduction on the labor expense incurred in the taxable year. B, 100% additional deduction on power expense incurred in the taxable year. C, 100% additional deduction on research and development expense incurred in the taxable year or letter D, 100% additional deduction on training expense incurred in the taxable year. Go. So the correct answer is letter B as in boy. So sino ang ating uh, winner? <laughs> Letter B po. Okay. Lang, uh, wait lang po guys. Uh, hinahanap lang po ako sinong win. <laughs> Marami na, na medyo natabunan na. Parang hindi ko ma... Wala lang sample yan. Hindi ko marinig ang boss. Ang winner po ay... Si Mr. Samson Jr. Caswe. Okay, question number five. Sale of goods and services by non-registered non business enterprise to a non-resident buyer for delivery to export-oriented enterprise is subject to A, 0% VAT, B, 12% VAT, C, VAT exam, or letter D, either A or B, go. So the correct answer is letter B as in boy, 12% VAT. So ang winner po natin para sa question number five Michael Angelo Lucero. is si Mr. Michael Angelo Lucero. Okay, congratulations po, sir. Question number six. Which of the following statements is false? A. Sale of raw materials or packaging materials by a PESA registered business enterprise to a non-resident buyer for delivery to a local export-oriented enterprise is exempt from VAT if PESA RBE is under 5% GIT. B, sale of goods and services by non-registered business enterprise to a non-resident buyer for delivery to export-oriented enterprise is exempt from VAT. C, sale by a domestic market a registered enterprise to a registered export enterprise of goods directly and exclusively for use in production of registered activity shall be subject to 0% VAT if the registered export enterprise is under ITH or letter D, sale of goods by local resident supplier to registered export enterprise for direct and exclusive use for registered activity shall be, shall be subject to 0% VAT. Go. So the answer is letter, letter B. Oh, congratulations for Ma'am Teresa Keeling. Question number seven. 
which of the following is not a mandatory requirement in applying for VAT zero rating by VAT registered local suppliers? A, BAR certificate of registration, B, IPA certificate of registration, C, IPA VAT zero rating certificate or letter D, sworn declaration stating that the goods and or services being purchased will not be used directly and exclusively in the registered project or activity. Go. The correct answer for question number seven is letter D. Yung pinakamahaba. <laughs> Question number eight. Ah, wala pa pala nanalo. Joke lang. Prank lang po yung prank lang. <laughs> so our winner for question number seven. Wait lang po, nagpapakid lang po nung chat, uh, chat box. I don't know about Okay, congratulations po Ma'am Karen Bilarmino. Kayo po ang nagwagi sa question number 7. Okay, question number 8. Which of the following statements is are true? Letter A, uh, registered export enterprises whose sales are generated only from the registered activity and have shifted from ITH to 5% GIT or SI, SCIT shall within two months from the expiry of their ITH to change their registration status from VAT to non-VAT. B, if registered export enterprise has various registered enterprise under either ITH or 5% GIT or SCIT, RBE shall remain VAT registered until the expiration of the ITH for all its registered activity. The RBE shall uh, report a VAT exempt the sales under the 5% GIT or, or SCIT and sales under ITH as 0% VAT. Or let, uh, letter C, if the registered export enterprise has other activities other than those registered with ITAs that are subject to VAT, it shall remain as VAT registered and shall report its sales in the VAT, re VAT return as VATable, zero rated, and or VAT exempt as the case may be, or letter D, all of the above. Go. This <laughs> are the correct answer is letter D, all of the above. Sir Albert Ehe. Congratulations, po, Sir Albert Ehe. Congratulations, po. For question number nine, uh, statement number one. Only the portion of the expenses directly and exclusively used for registered project or activity, including administrative penalties, shall be qualified for VAT zero rating on local purchases. Statement number two, cost incurred prior to registration of project or activity 
with the IPA is an allowable cost in computing gross income? A, both statements are true. B, both statements are false. C, true, false. D, false, true, go. So the correct answer is letter letter B as in boy. Both statements are false. So congratulations, po, sir Enrique Barate. And for the last question, question number 10. Which of the following statements is subject to 12% VAT? A sale by local VAT registered seller to registered export enterprise for direct and exclusive use in the production of the registered activity of the registered export enterprise. B, sale of raw materials or packaging materials by a PESA registered business enterprise to a non-resident buyer for delivery to a resident local export oriented enterprise if the RB is under 5% GIT. Or letter, letter C, Sale by a local VAT registered seller of goods to a domestic market registered enterprise directly and exclusively for use in the production of the registered activity of the domestic market registered enterprise or letter D, none of the above go. So the correct answer is letter, letter C. So our winner for the last question is Jacqueline Razon. Okay, congratulations for Ma'am Jacqueline Razon. Okay. Ating sampung nanalo. Um, ibibigay ko po ulit ang aking contact number para po masend natin through Gcash ang uh, mga nanalo. First po is si Ma'am Aprilin Solano. Number two, Marites Maliklem. Number three, Ermalin Macarubo. Number four, Samson Jr. Cose. Number five, Michael Angelo Lucero. Number six, Teresa King. Seven, Karen Villarmino. Eight, Albert Eje. Number nine, Enrique Barade. And number 10, Jacqueline Razon. Ipopost ko po ang aking cellphone number at ipapacheck ko rin po kung may nagpost ng number nyo dito sa ating chat box para po maklaim ang inyong 250 pesos worth of GCash. Thank you po for participating. All right. Congratulations. Okay, ma'am. Thank you very much for that happy moment while reviewing the relevant issue of PESA. So we will go, ma'am, to... Um, the question and answer portion. Parang ang dami pong questions nandun po sa, uh, ano, sa portal po natin. Can we pause, ma'am? Can we pause, ma'am, Marianne? Or nakakaya? Nasaan na yung mga questions? Ayan po, at para po sa ating open forum, we would like to acknowledge din po the presence of our CAS, um, Chief of Assessment Section from RD of 57, CAS Carlito Mariano. Nandito rin po siya para tulungan tayo sa open forum natin since alam na alam po natin lahat na masyadong mainit ang talakayan. Pinili po talaga namin yung topic na pinaka-recent para sa ating mga PESA registered enterprises which is the VAT zero rating na galing sa mga suppliers po natin kasi ito po yung pinaka-relevant na issue natin currently though napakaraming issue po palagi ng PESA ito po yung pinaka-mainit na palaging pinag-uusapan nandito po ako si ang ating pong speaker kanina si Sir Arnold Perez at ang ating pong chief ng assessment section, si Sir Carlito Mariano, at iba pong mga group supervisors ng RDO 57 
para naman po tulungan tayong magsagot. Kasi baka po merong mga sobrang mahihirap na tanong dito na hindi namin inaasahan. Pero ang ang, ang, ang hindi po mga tanong ay susubukin namin sagutin ng buong giting sa hapong ito. Ano po? And with that, start na po natin ang sabi po dito. We are a logistics provider and a subcon of Moog situated in Peza. We purchase supplies for Moog use. Our suppliers are being paid by our U.S. head office and we don't maintain any inventory or purchases account on our books related to those supplies. Our supplier already wants to impose VAT on our purchases. Is this correct? If not, what should we do about this? Thank you. Kaya na lang na. Ganito po kasi yun, no? Isa po ito sa nabanggit doon ni, ni Sir Arnold kanina doon sa mga diagram ng sample natin kung alin-alin nga lang ba. So to clarify po, kasi po unang-una, ang paulit-ulit natin sinasabi dito ay registered export enterprise. Ano pa ang keyword natin? Directly and exclusively used. Ano po? So Kuya Arnold, bigyan po natin sila ng ginaw dito. So, alamin po natin kung si logistic provider ba ay export. So, kung hindi siya export, subject po sa input VAT. Especially kung hindi naman po direct and exclusive yung transaction para dun sa operation ni uh, customer. So, for the uh, BIR side, subject po sa 12% VAT. Kasi malinaw po yung registered export enterprise. Yan lang po yung pwedeng mag-avail ng exemption sa, uh, sorry, mag-avail ng VAT zero rate sa purchases ng goods and services. So, subject po sa 12% VAT. Ayun, Ayun po, po ang po. sagot. Ano po, subject po kayo sa ating, ang supplier nyo po ay pwedeng mag-impose sa inyo ng VAT. For our second question po, We are under PESA. May I know if our purchases of packaging materials can be considered as directly and exclusively used in companies' registered activities? Hmm. Medyo mahirap po kasi ito kasi hindi niyo po sinabi dito kung ano yung registered activity ng company niyo. Kung halimbawa po, kasi sabi ko doon, kasi doon kanina, um, ex ano directly and exclusively ibig sabihin hindi mabubuo ang product na na ginagawa nyo kung wala yung packaging materials na yon pero kung packaging lang siya per se kasi hindi niyo sinabi kung ano yung materials nyo, automatic po siya na hindi po siya directly and exclusively used alamin po natin kung ano po yung product ng registered activity nyo. Kasi since napaka-broad po ng ating mga activities na ginagrant sa atin ng PESA, may mga manufacturing po tayo, meron tayong logistics, may mga ecozone, meron ITBPO, so kailangan po natin siyang malaman. Ano po? Next po, related to purchases of services under PESA, How about the admin fees related to manpower provided by subcontractors which are direct and exclusively related to registered business project of the company? Are these admin fees subject to 12% VAT? Teka, tatawagin ko sa Sir Lito. Baka kasi gusto niyang mag-answer. Cass, naririnig mo kami po? Uh, uh, yes, Bisor. Ano, ano po? Napag-usapan namin to ni Bisor Day na kanina kasi yung manpower services ay maraming klase no janitorial ba to hindi ba na pinagbabawal na hindi na siya kasama hindi ba sa registered activity so security ba to edi hindi na rin siya kasama sa registered activity so kung ito ay related sa manpower na nagtatrabaho sa factory doon sa on-site na operation ng registered activity So halimbawa ang registered activity ay gumawa ng bola na pang basketball, ang ginawa ay bola na pang volleyball. Yun lamang manpower uh, related activity sa operations ng uh, registered activity ang pwede. 
So, yun po yung sagot doon. Pakiklaro lang po kung ano po yung manpower services na pinoprovide. At pakiklaro lang po, maaari po itong services na manpower, pero pinoprovide naman po nito ay legal accounting services ay hindi naman po related na ito sa registered activity. Thank you po, Kras. Hopefully po ay nasagot natin yung ta tanong ni Ma'am Joanna. No? So ang, ang interpretation lang po natin dito, yung PESA, yung PESA po kasi natin na issue lagi, laging specific. Ano po, hindi kami makabigay ng, ng um, saktong sagot kasi usually po ay um, general yung tanong. Kung ano po yung general na tanong, sasagutin din namin siya as to general provision ng law based po sa mga binibigay sa amin sa issuances. Ano po? Um, moving forward po. Moving forward po. Um, question regarding domestic market enterprises. If an existing PESA registered taxpayer is selling 100% domestically, are they automatically classified as domestic market enterprise? Thus, they are no longer entitled to VAT zero rating on local purchases related to its registered activities. Mukhang yung tanong ni ma'am, kailangan lang niya ng clarification. Kuya Arnold, is this a yes or a no? It's a big yes. So, domestic uh, registered enterprise, they cannot avail VAT zero rate. So, subject to 12% VAT. Uh, Sir Arnold, ako may ikakwalify lang ako. Tama naman yung sagot ni Sir Arnold. Ano? Uh, ikakwalify ko lang sana yung 100% domestic. Kasi si PESA, pwede siyang magbenta. PESA Registered uh, Enterprise, binenta niya 100% domestic doon sa PESA Registered Enterprise na nag-export. Pero domestic yung sale. Pero yung bumili ay in-export lahat. So in which case, uh, yung classification niya ay hindi siya magiging DME kasi, nasa PES, uh, kasi siya ay nag-export. Yung uh, sinuplayan ni PESA registered. So, kasi sa PESA pwedeng may intervening transactions ng dalawang sale and purchases pa rin. Hindi, hindi rin siya doon nagtatapos. Kung ganun yung ibig sabihin nung nagtatanong, pwede siyang, hindi, uh, uh, pwede siyang zero rated. Pero kung ang assumption naman ay yung kay Sir, kay Sir, ano, uh, kay Sir Arnold, eh, uh, batable siya. So yung sa akin, pwede, pwede siya maging zero rated kung ganun ang assumption. Kay Sir naman ay batable kasi ganun nga yung assumption niya, which in both cases ay tama naman. So ika-qualify niya lang kung itong 100% domestic kasi po pwede pa rin yan may karugtong ay in-export. So napakagaling po ng clarification ni Sir. So biruin nyo yung tanong na yun about domestic market enterprise ay pwedeng mahati sa dalawang transaction. First, kung ang DME is domestically as in domestically sa labas ng, ng eco zone siya nagbenta, so, ibig sabihin automatic na hindi siya qualified for the VAT zero rating. However, yung clarification ni, ni Cass dito sa atin, kung siya ay PESA registered, pero yung ibig sabihin ng 100% na domestic niya, sinuplay niya rin yun sa kapwa PESA niya na nag-export -e naman. Ibig sabihin yun, qualified pa rin siya for the VAT zero rating, provided, provided, provided na meron siyang submit sa supplier na VAT zero rating po para sa kanya. Ano po? Moving forward, should all export businesses, bet lumabo itong mata ko, should all export businesses need to register in PESA? <laughs> Medyo broad yung tanong ni ma'am. Ano po? Pero kasi po ang atin pong PESA, ang atin po kasing um, hinahati po ang ating ecozone. May mga ecozone po tayo, depende kung sino nakakasakop. Usually po kasi dito sa Laguna, PESA po siya. It doesn't mean export ang business mo, mag-register ka sa PESA. Ang PESA po natin dito, nakalagay sa isang ecozone. So, ibig sabihin, may isang lugar tayo, kagaya ng Laguna Techno Park, ng Liip, ng LISP, which is PESA covered. Pero kung halimbawang export yung business mo, garments ka, nag-export ka, 
ano po yun? Usually, BOI po ang nire-register nyo. Na sa BOI yung IPA nyo, yung Investment Promotion Agency. At hindi po sa PESA. Kasi ang PESA po ay na, uh, meron siyang isang um, particular na lugar kung saan pa. Mayroon siya dapat um, ma-register. Ano po? Next po. In applying for a VAT zero rating to BIR, documents must be certified through copy or original or photocopy of all listed documents needed is okay. Kuya Arnold? Para po dun sa Certificate of Registration ni PESA, hindi naman po pwedeng original yun kasi kay PESA company po yun. So mag-request po kayo kay PESA ng certified true copy. Pero yun pong mga sworn statement, it must be original. Ayun po, ano po, so nasugot tayo. Kung mga certification po ang ating isa-submit, dapat po siya ay certified through copy. Pero kung mga sworn statement po, dapat po ay original ang isa-submit po natin. Next po, VAT zero certificate will be annually renewed. Yes po, ang um, zero VAT certificate po na issued ni ICED based on revenue issuances, ay i-renew po natin annually. So, failure to renew, so hindi po natin maa-avail yung zero rating. Uh, sir, sir, dadagdag oh. lang. Ako po yung nagtanong. In other words, it is not a permanent privilege ng isang, uh, B, uh, B, uh, ng isang registered export economic zone. So, it is mandatory na you will apply annually. Gusto pa rin taruhin yung isa na, na ano ako doon. Meron kasi akong company, uh, manufacturer siya ng packaging, maraming nag-claim na, na supply na customer na bumibili na they are zero rated kasi pesa. Dapat pala ngayon bubutusin if the plastic is directly related sa activities, then zero siya. Pag hindi pala, mag impose pala ako ng 12% ba? Tama po ba? Therefore, yes, Ma'am Mimi. Very that, well said po. Napakaganda clarification po yun. Actually, uh, ang, ang uh, real problema kasi ng PESA, tatlig yung apat yan eh. Meron silang zero rated sales, meron silang exempt sales, meron silang VAT sales, meron silang VATABOT sales to the government. Kaya lang kasi, masyado silang nalilito na Pesa ka, ang sarili kang batas na ginogovern kung BOI ka or ano pa yung other agency mo. Ang problema, meron kasing Pesa, reg uh, Pesa registered company na nag-a-avail ng services mula sa labas tulad ng nagsusupply ng mga manpower services dapat, sabi nga ni Cass, directly related doon sa paggawa ng product. So kapag ikaw pala ay supplier ng pagkain at kakain sa iyo ang mga empleyado ng pesa, dapat pala directly na bumibili sila ng pagkain nila doon mismo sa loob ng pesa zone. Napakahirap ng i-identify kung zero rating. Talagi ko nga, uh, meron pa tayong second batch, ma'am, ng another pesa. Kasi i-clarify natin siya ng ng Batch per batch per batch per batch. Mag-discuss tayo ng pesa na ang logis na ang, ang services mo na nire-render mo ay manpower. mag tayo ng pesa na ang nire-render mo ay restaurant ka. Na ang isa ang nire-register mo is manufacturing. Kasi nga, hindi naman nag avoid sa taxation ng mga yan. Kundi hindi nila alam saan nila ilulugar yung sarili nila. Pasensya na ha, kinaklarify ko lang ma'am. Kasi, sa dami ng ini-encounter ko na, ma'am, nagpapakain ako sa pesa, ganito, hindi pwede. Yung ang depreciation ng building, hindi ko inaalaw, hindi po. Dati-dati kasi, si depreciation ng building, a direct expense. Kaya lang, sinasabi ko, asa ng administrative dyan? Nasa ngayon yung production dyan? Na ano, nag, nagpapagawa pa ako ng mga blueprint, blueprint, para lang, ina-avoid ko, na pag dumating si LOA, 
kaya ko siyang depensahan. Okay ko ba? Pasensya lang. Pwede ba kung humingi ng next batch nito ng July para sa president-elect ko na si Paklibar? Pwede po ba? Yes, ma'am. Kaya hindi coordinate lang po kay Kasli to para po okay. ma-i-plot din po natin sa ating series of webinars po in coordination with Pit Palaguna. Thank you so much po. Apo. So, thank you, ma'am Mimi, para po doon sa inyong mga questions na yun. Kasi ito po kasi is, yung tanong kasi ni ma'am is practical na nangyayari talaga sa atin sa labas ng PESA. Ano, um, as a taxing authority po kasi ang BIR, uh, ang PESA po kasi ay ini-encourage natin, di po ba, ang mga investors na mag tayo yung businesses natin inside the Philippines. However nga po, medyo may mga loopholes yung incentives na napoprovide sa ating mga um, registered business enterprises. Kaya po, kiniclear out po siya, iniisa-isa po siyang linisin para po hindi rin po tayo um, magkaroon ng hirap ng pagpapainterpret kung ano yung tax na dapat in-impose natin sa ating mga PESA registered enterprise. Ano po kaya po natin ginagawa ang series of seminars na ito. Next po, we are a local supplier. How can we substantiate the VAT zero rated sale to our customer? Mm. Andito na naman ako sa medyo broad yung tanong niya or hindi ko lang pa masyado naintindihan. Ano po? Pero kung ikaw po yung local supplier po, ano po? Tapos ang sinusuplayan mo po ng goods mo ay isang PESA registered na enterprise, export enterprise, supposed to be po dapat ikaw yung uh, magre-request ng VAT zero rating natin sa HED para po ma-qualify ka as VAT zero rated supplier. Ano po, as discussed kanina ni Kuya Arnold. Kuya Arnold, may dadagdag ka doon? So, so, kapag ikaw yung local supplier, ang tandaan mo, si local supplier, um, kapag regularly na nagsusupply ka ng goods kay PESA, regular yung transaction nyo, bibigyan ka naman ni PESA ng mga requirements na kakailanganin mo mag a add up ka lang ng sworn statement at um, ibang documents doon para makapagpa-certify ka na ikaw ay VAT zero rated supplier. Ano po? Next po, what if an RBI... Sir Grace. Po. Excuse. Yes po. Oo, in addition doon sa question ng local supplier. Sige ma'am. Kasi before, before kapag ka si customer is a registered, let's say given registered export enterprise, with PESA COR and qualified for VAT zero rating certificate din siya. Kapag si, si local supplier hindi naka-apply kay BIR ng certificate as to zero rating ng sale namin to PESA or registered export enterprise, uh, medyo malubag si BIR na inaallow as long as si customer ay qualified talaga for VAT zero rating. So, ang question, kung hindi ba kami naka-apply, would it still be the same? Or talagang masasubject kami for 12% VAT for failure to apply sa BIR? Sad to say, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Meron tayong transitory provision lang dito with regards na parang dapat nasubmit natin ng March 9 kung hindi pa tayo naka-apply. Tama ba? Mm -hmm. May RMC lang tayo dito na yung hindi naka-apply, i-provide lang natin yung regular na sinasabi mo, ma'am, na by VAT zero rating naman si customer natin. Meron mm -hmm. naman dito. Ina-allow natin na, but, na zero rated pa rin yung sales mo. However po, after the March 9, supposed to be dapat naka-apply ka na ng VAT zero rating mo. Kasi po ang ating VAT zero rating is prospective ang application. Ibig sabihin, mm -hmm. yes. hindi po natin ito na-apply yan, ma'am. So subject natin to sa sa VAT na. Once na ma-audit ka, ma yes, ma'am, subject na sa VAT okay. yung sales mo na yun. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you very much. Ang dagdag lang natin na yung mga, kasi nag-take effect ito, third quarter last year, yung ano niya, retroactive provisions. So, naitanong yan at sinabi na merong kung in, wala pa kasing IRR noon, kaya yung mga nag-zero rating na wala pang uh, zero rated certificates, eh patawad muna. Pero katulad na sinabi ni Bisor, so meron tayong hanggang kailan. So hindi siya forever. So dapat mag-comply na. Dahil sa susunod, 
during the audit, hihingi na yon at kung walang zero rated certificate, kahit zero rated pa siya, kahit related pa siya sa ano, eh sorry po, eh kami po ay talagang maniningil din ng bat. Sana po ay malina. Salamat Papa, po. Sa Papa, so starting March 10, 2022, may kit na. Nakapagwala kami in-apply. Bata Opo. mo na siya. Opo, yun po yung effectivity oh. ng issuance tungkol po rito. Uh, yung immediate effectivity, di ho ba upon publication? Sorry po, salamat. So, hindi po ba siya ano, like before, parang uh, kinoconsider siya as VAT exempt, so yung input taxes i-allocate, hindi na ba siya ganun? Automatic, but subject to VAT na 12%. Pag si, pag si ano po, seller po ay nakapag, nakapag nasa 5, uh, kung, da, kung si seller po local ay Local supplier under, po. Local supplier po. So pwede rin kasi siyang BOI eh. Pwede rin siya naka 5%. Ang sale niya, exempt po siya. Uh, registered export enterprise si customer. Pero si local supplier, hindi naka-apply. So hindi ba siya... Parang si, yung sale namin to a registered export enterprise magiging exempt sale in which si input tax ay allocate namin. Hindi na ba siya ganun? Ah, hindi na po siya ganun ngayon, ma'am. Hindi Apo, na po so kasi nag-depart na nga po tayo sa, mm -hmm. sa destination principle. Wala na po ineffective na po siya tsaka inoperative. Yun po yung dinamit na term ng batas. Apo. Sige po. Thank you po. Sir, uh, uh, sorry, sorry. Mrs. Lapusio. Gusto ko lang susugat si Ma'am Iris Mendoza. Yung question niya kasi, yan yung, yan yung kinaklarify ko kanina na since si BIR nagkaroon ng mandatory transition period, ibig sabihin talaga kahit na tayo ay REE o kahit na hindi rin REE yung kabila, magiging mabusisi na pala tayo na bad zero rating. Kasi before, yang ito ito pinag-usapan kasi natin epekto na ng ng uh, amendment ng NIRC na since 1944 na na-amend na rin dahil sa train law na na-amend na rin nang dahil sa create law. Ito ang pinag-uusapan natin ngayon, pinag sigurado ng BIR paano sila makakakolekta dahil nga lahat clean na na bad zero rating. Tama ba ko sir? Sa mga ang mga pinag-uusapan natin kasi Tama naman si Iris eh, yung kiniklaim na niya na before. Kasi before nga naman, basta nasa PESA, basta may bad zero rating yan, basta registered yun ng BOI, basta may ICH yan, at clear yan, o oh, bad zero ka. Hindi ko na nga po ini-entertain ang exam eh, kasi may threshold po yun na 3 million lang. Baka na naman po makalimutan din po yun. Kaya REE ka or whatever, at exam ang ginamit mo, may threshold lang yan na 3 million. Yun. So, Miss Iris, kinaklarify ko lang kila, kila sir. Meron pala talaga yung date natin na March 9. March 9 nga po ba yung magic word natin? Ano? Yung magic date ano? Na, yan. So, ako din po kasi nung March 8, ano March 9, na, na ano din po ako nun, na, na, na siya. Kaya lahat, hala, magparegister na ano kasi hindi nga po mababat zero. Salamat po Sir Cass, salamat po sa inyo BIR. Sige po, tuloy tayo. Oh, sir, kahit hanggang 4.30. Ma'am, hanggang 4.30. <laughs> Medyo mahaba-haba pa pong diskusyon to, ano? pero we are running out of time. Pero dire-diretso pa rin po tayo. Tama ka, Ma'am Mimi, na kasi po ang ating NIRC ay patuloy po ang, um, ang tawag dito, Um, nababago kasi siya, nagkaroon tayo ng train law, tapos nagkaroon tayo ng create law. So nababago po siya, nadadagdagan siya ng provisions. Yung iba pong provisions ng luming, lumang NIRC has been repealed na rin po. So ibig sabihin kung ano yung um, superseding natin ngayon sa create, yun po yung sinusunod natin. At dun po natin napatun napatunayan sa create ngayon na walang forever. Ano po, dati kasi may forever eh. So ngayon, wala pong forever. Moving forward po tayo. What if an RBE still subject to ITH has income from non-PESA registered activity? What is the VAT and income tax statement on this income? Thank you. Perdon. Ito ko lang po. What if an RBE still subject to ITH has 
So alamin po natin kung yung bang RBA ay registered export or registered domestic. Kung siya naka-ITH, titingnan din po natin kung yung uh, sale niya sa non-PESA registered activity ay part ng registered activity niya. Kung hindi siya part ng registered activity, so subject siya sa regular income tax, subject din siya sa 12% part. So check-check po natin yung registration niya para ng PESA. And uh, classification niya kung uh, export or domestic. Yes po. Thank you, Kuya Arnold. So, ang linaw naman po noon, ano po, kung ikaw po ay non-PESA registered activity, usually po, ito ay subject sa regular income tax rate at subject din po ito sa VAT. Next po, bakit po kaya disallowed ang shuttle service when it is being used by the company para alagaan ang kanilang employees? Hindi po ba direct labor po yun, especially during the pandemic, na mahirap po at mahal mag-commute? <laughs> Natuwa naman ako doon sa tanong niya. Naiintindihan po namin. May puso naman po kami. However po, we are mandated by revenue regulations na kung ano po yung nakalagay laang doon, yun po yung directly and exclusively lang po na expense na pwede natin ibigay. However po, um, shuttle service kasi ma'am ay hindi siya kasamang magiging part ng product. So itinawit niya si empleyado papunta sa bahay nila hanggang doon sa pesa yung po kasing service na yun ay hindi form part ng product na ginagawa ni PESA. Tanging yun lamang kung ipinayad kay empleyado para gawin yung servisyo, para mabuo yung produkto, yun lang po yung makukonsider talaga po natin. Ano po? Thank you po. Ma'am, follow up question lang po dyan sa shuttle. Pero wala pa po. Follow up uh, question, yes ma'am. Wala pa pong revenue issuances na naka-state po talaga na yung shuttle is hindi considered as direct and exclusively used. Kasi ma'am, yung atin kasi minimension kanina ni Kuya Arnold, it is 11-2015. Matagal mm. na po, matagal na po na, eh 2005 pala, 11-2005 na RR pa to. As pinakalagay siya, even before na dapat siya ay direct salaries, direct labor, direct supervision expense ma'am. Yung mga indirect po, hindi po dating makukonsider as part ng ating um, deduction po sa gross income ma'am. Kasama lang siya sa other Uh, um, deductions, pero hindi po siya allowable na i-deduct natin sa ating gross income, ma'am. Mm, kahit po ang sumasakay sa shuttle is yung mga direct labor na part ng uh, production of goods and services? Yes, ma'am. Um, yes, ma'am, kasi... <laughs> <laughs> gusto, gustuhin ko man, ma'am, na i-qualify siya. Hindi kasi uh -huh. siya part ng direct labor, ma'am, eh, as in, para kasi siyang employees benefits na binibigay mo in sustenance sa ating mga, sa ating mga empleyado, ma'am, eh, pero hindi siya form part ng direct ng product natin. Ang pinag-uusapan kasi natin dito, ma'am, yung product na minamanufacture ng ating pesa, registered mm -hmm. company, ma'am. Kas lito, mm -hmm. yes, meron ka pong additional? Uh, siguro, a-agree din ako sa kay Bisor, kasi yung susunod na question diyan kung related ba siya o partially related so halimbawa kuryente hindi naman po lahat ng kuryente ay napasok sa registered activity ang hinihingi po ni BIR ay proper allocation basis ang sinabi po sa regulation maganda daw magkaroon ng separate electric meter or submeter yung para sa production at para sa non-production or non-registered activity. So kung ito naman daw po ay uh, ganong klase ng mga rental, ang nire-rent po yung space, ay magkaroon din daw po ng proper allocation. Maaari po sa square foot ng rental, o i-allocate yung para sa registered activity, para sa... Uh, para po doon sa operation at para po sa administrative na hindi po po pwedeng isama sa registered activity na expense. Sa shuttle po kasi ang nakikita ko by logic, hindi natin makita yung allocation, paano natin i-allocate. So, uh, ma-identify ba natin na ang sumakay dito ay ganito sa factory o sa related activity, sa accounting, janitor or what. Parang yung allocation basis po ay mahirap gawin. So unless po siguro makakapag-establish kayo 
ng napaka-strong na allocation basis kasi ngayon po eh, susunod na accounting treatment yung pag-allocate po ng mga direct costs. Mm -hmm. okay. Sir Cass, uh, oh. Dr. Supervisor Ma'am Grace, I would like only na i-remind po po kayo, pwede po siguro mag accommodate na lang po tayo ng isa. Kasi if you will notice, 495, ay 395 tayo kanina. Ngayon ay 370 na lang. Umaalis na sila. Wala silang certificate of attendance. Tapos po, pwede po ba ako mag-request na yung mga questions na, un na unanswered, if we can go uh, give them the answer directly sa kanilang email, will that be available on your part? Or, sa susunod po, pag nagpalaro tayo, wag ng 10 questions. Five questions. <laughs> Kasi ma, oo, oh, oh, na muna sa Q&A bago tayo magpa-question po. Okay po, thank you very much po. Yes, Ma'am Mimi, paki-forward po sa amin yung ibang undid na questions natin para po, sana kasama yung email address nila para we can address din po sila properly. Ano po, for our one last question na lang po, mamimili na lang po kami dito. Ano po, since related po ito sa topic natin, isa na lang po, ito pong kay Ma'am Michelle Furness ba? Apo, Lahat po ba ng local suppliers ay kami po ba ang dapat mag-initiate to submit to them ng requirements under RMC 24-2020? Sabi dito. Um, ang sagot po dito, ibig sabihin po ba si Ma'am Michelle um, Pesa, reg Pesa uh, Registered Business Enterprise kayo Ma'am Michelle? Pesa po. Yes ma'am. Um, kay sabihan niyo lang yung supplier niyo kasi supposed to be dapat alam nila na na magsi-zero rated na sila otherwise sila naman po yung i-charge ng VAT hindi po kasi kayo ano po so for the purpose po na alam nila na dapat VAT zero rated sila masabihan po natin as tayo yung mga registered export enterprise na nasa PESA po natin na yung mga supplier na ito which is directly and exclusively na ginagamit naman natin yung product po nila masabihan po sila na dapat they have to apply for the VAT zero rating. May karagdagan siyang tanong pero mukhang medyo mahaba na po. Ano po, itatry na lang po natin siyang sagutin. Kukunin po namin kay Miss Marian ang atin po mga natirang tanong. Salamat po Miss Marian. Salamat po Mamimi. Uh, salamat din po BIR sa napakagandang uh, tarakayan natin po. Okay po? <laughs> At this point in time, uh, let us give the uh, speaker and our group supervisor the certificate of appreciation. Uh, can we uh, can we represent the certificate of appreciation, ma'am? Okay, ma Marian. All right. Uh, the certificate of appreciation goes like this: the Philippine Institute of Certified Public Accountant, uh, Laguna Chapter, present the certificate of appreciation to Grace Magubat for her invaluable contribution. For the Peak Pride Laguna webinar on the topic review of PESA relevant issues given this 8th day of June 2022, signed by your truly as your president and as your MC today, and by Ma'am Rodora Alberto, the Vice President for Professional Development of Peak Pride Laguna Chapter. <laughs> the same certificate of appreciation goes to Sir Arnold Perez, and this is also signed by your truly. And when I will go to the uh, to BIRRDO number 57, I will bring the original copy of this. So we will hear the uh, closing remarks from our beloved uh, Ardo, Miss Emily Singson, please. And then you say, Ma'am Emily, Ma'am Grace. Hi, Ma'am. Good afternoon. Ma'am, may emergency lang si si Ma'am Amy po. So ang mag oh, closing remarks po natin is si Caslito po. Yes, sir. Sir Cas, take it away, sir. My favorite uh, chief assessment section. Yeah. <laughs> sir, madilim ka. Madilim. Oh, <laughs> Lilipat po tayo. <laughs> madilim ka. Yeah. Para makita nila na ang Sir Cas ay masyadong masipag na sumagot sa Bible, masyadong masipag na sumagot personally, masyadong masipag sumagot kahit hindi taga-RD o 57 ang question. Yan si I agree, ma'am. I agree, ma'am, Mimi. Napakasipag po ni Cass. Yes. Nakamute ka lang, Cass.
Okay ka na, Kaz. Uh, once again, a pleasant good afternoon to the officers, officials, present and past of Pigpa Laguna Chapter and San Pablo Pigpa Chapter, whose collaboration has made this event very timely, relevant, and successful. Kudos again to the whole team. Thank you again, Mamimi, and to all of the uh, officials of PICPA, lalo lalo na sa ating entire Southern Tagalog region. On behalf of Ma'am Emily Singson and RDO Mike B. Morada, allow me to humbly again ask your support and cooperation towards at the attainment of our collection goal, not only for this month, but for the entire semester of uh, first semester of 2022. It is only then that we can achieve this much with your support, without which I would humbly say that we cannot attain uh, this success of our goal attainment during the past semester. Ngayon lang po kami nakarecord ng three straight months ay nakagoal cumulative ang district. So maraming salamat po sa inyo. Congratulations. I, alam po ninyo, wala po ngayong mga enforcement activities and we deem that this is one very important event to provide you something that is very important to us, especially matters relating now to PESA, uh, whose uh, zero rating uh, has already been, uh, shall we say, uh, trimmed down by provision of law. Uh, it was not entirely removed, so, but rather the law provides now certain conditions upon which it would be enjoyed as part of the tax incentives promised under the CREATE law. So the CREATE law was then a dream, but now it is a reality. Before, we, the pandemic did not exist, but now we are always thinking ahead of time, what would be the next sequel of the pandemic? So what should be our attitude then as professionals and tax collectors? We just hope for the best and we can only hope for the best if BIR would be able to tune finally with the goals and achievements of PICPA, our partner in tax collection and our partner in nation building. Thank you very much to each one of us and to all of, of, of our dearest taxpayers of RD57 Laguna and to all the dear taxpayers of our neighboring cities. Maraming salamat po. Magandang hapon po muli. Thank you so much po, Cass. Thank you very much. At 390... 397 po talaga ang nakinig. Ano po? Pero mali. Gusto ko din po sanang kunin ng pansin po ng lahat ang naririto. The PICPA National Office, ini, uh, inihingi po namin ang cooperation po ng lahat ng CPA sa anumang sector, government sector, education, commerce and industry, public practice. Please, submit your proxy form para sa nat darating na general membership meeting natin sa July. Kung kayo naman ay interesado na umaten ng through Zoom, why not? Ngayon, kung kayo naman po ay masyadong gahol sa mga time nyo, pwede po kayo mag-fill up ng inyong pong proxy form. Ako po'y nananawagan sa lahat ng kapatiran sa ating profesyon na mantutuos. Bilang mantutuos or accountant, bilang auditor or, or, or uh, tagasuri ng mga accounts, eh nararapat din lang po na ating tulungan ang ating uh, Philippine Institute of Certified Public Accountant. Maraming salamat po. Okay po? So maraming maraming salamat, BIR. At uh, muli, hinihingi ko po sana na uh, kami din po ay suportahan nyo sa susunod na webinar natin sa darating na June 11, 2022. The concept of true cost accounting for sustainability. Yan po yung susunod na topic po natin. Thank you very much po. And Please, a uh, few reminder, make sure to complete the Zoom evaluation displayed on your screen. And also, you need to complete the Google survey by, uh, by clicking button number four 
at the centralized portal within 30 minutes after the close of this webinar. And you can verify your submission of the Google survey by clicking the button number five at the centralized portal. After submission of the Google survey form, kindly check your email to be sure that your submission has been duly recorded by our system. Once again, this is your president, Jeronima A. Lapus, saying an, an endless thanks for continuously supporting our government by collecting the right taxes and proper taxes through the right uh, arm. This is the Bureau of Internal Revenue. Saludo po ako lahat sa inyo. Maraming salamat po at isang mapagpalang hapon po sa lahat sa atin.